Hey, it's Corey here with Sunlight Contractors again with another new construction spray foam video. This time I want to take the time to touch on what to consider when approaching the difficult decision of what materials and contractors to use to insulate your new build. Most people rely on the builder to make these decisions, but as an informed consumer, you can and should know what you want and be able to seize the opportunity to use these products the one time you have unencumbered access to these areas needing insulation. That being said, let's get into some of my recommendations and why I think these should be your guidelines when taking on your new home project. Firstly, let's talk about the subfloor or crawl space. Here in the South, many of our homes are wood framed and raised off the ground. This leaves our subfloors exposed to the elements and sometimes even worse, the critters. The insulation in this area should be robust, provide protection from moisture intrusion and seal up any holes, cracks or crevices that any air or pest can use to infiltrate the home. The only product we at Sunlight will use in this area of the home is closed cell spray foam. It not only insulates, but it also prevents moisture intrusion and actually adds strength to the floor structure. Making the floor components one monolithic piece by way of sealing and adhering all the wood members together helps prevent damage over time from things like shifting, something our area is known all too well for, as well as preventing those annoying pops and cracks we've all heard when walking through older raised homes, closed cell foam won't break down or degrade over time like other materials. And for that reason, it is the only product that I would install on my own subfloor. After the subfloor, the next thing to talk about would be the walls. A lot of people think the walls as being one of the most important areas to get right. But in actuality, at least in our climate zone, the walls are where what material you use to insulate has the least impact. There are pros and cons to each, of course, but inside exterior walls is the one area of a home where just about every product you can buy will actually live up to its stated rating. Because modern building practices have builders seal all six sides of wall cavities, air movement is virtually non-existent. This allows the insulation in the wall to have one job, stop conductive heat flow, which just about every insulation does well. Traditional insulations like fiberglass and cellulose rely on laborers to air seal with methods like using can foam or caulking, where spray foam is a sort of do-it-all-in-one-shot kind of product, especially in open cells case, which expands so much that it's really kind of hard to get wrong. My recommendations in exterior walls is this. If the budget allows, go with open cell spray foam. It will help mitigate sound transmission, insulate, and air seal with much better consistency than any other product. If a budget is a concern, then go with the tried and true fiberglass bats. Just be aware that the contractor doing the work must air seal prior to insulating. In the areas where wires and pipes use up most of the wall space, the insulation may be lacking due to the complexity of doing it right versus the simplicity of doing it fast. In most cases, sheetrock is going up right behind the walls being insulated, so you may not have adequate time to inspect these areas before they're covered up for good. Unless you have an infrared camera, of course, like the one we use to diagnose existing homes. We also utilize the thermal camera to check our own work, ensuring you get the best job every time. And this is a step that most contractors don't perform, as it is costly to buy the camera up front, and in most cases, you would just be adding extra work fixing issues that you may not be able to discover with the naked eye. But this is why we do perform that test. We know all too well what even the smallest of leaks to outside can do to a conditioned space attic. And that's a perfect transition into what I consider hands down the most important area to consider when insulating your new home, the attic. I have done countless heat loads on houses as a ResNet Raider and the ceiling, i.e. the roof or attic, is always the biggest heat source. This makes it the most important area to get right. With most homes' roofs getting more and more complex in design, with more and more homes having cathedral areas and vaulted ceilings leading to areas that become hard to ventilate properly, spray foam is becoming more and more popular. With a spray foam attic, you don't have to give up attic space to volatile high temperatures, and because of this, you don't need or want ventilation. But unfortunately, far too often the attic insulation gets cut due to budget, and we end up coming out two to three years after people have been living in their new homes to investigate why certain attic spaces are sweating or why the second floor won't cool. And more times than not, it's due to inadequate ventilation. More and more houses are getting away from whirly birds and unsightly power vents and going with ridge vents, which in my opinion and in my experience, just does not work. Fortunately for spray foam attics, this is a non-issue as we do not want ventilation in a conditioned space attic. And so this brings us into which product to use. Open cells by far are most popular in the attic application because it doesn't prevent roof leaks from entering the home. This sounds counterproductive on a roof, but in reality we want to know when there's a roof leak so we can have it repaired before it causes permanent damage to any other roof structure. 
However, there is another force of nature out there that's known for permanently damaging roof structures, and that is hurricanes. We've had plenty of customers that were looking for a solution to help their home withstand direct hits from hurricanes, and in that scenario, fortifying your roof with closed cell spray foam would be the ticket. This will in essence glue all the roof framing together, making it one monolithic structure, which in recent studies has been proven to add up to 300% more strength to the structure as a whole which in our area could be more important than seeing potential roof leaks. You just may need to stay up on roof maintenance a little more to compensate. Anyways, that just about wraps it up. These are my recommendations for insulating your new home build, and I have been spraying foam for over 10 years and insulating homes for even longer and have amassed numerous state and national licenses and certifications to back up my opinions, but don't take my word for it. Do your own research. Most of us will spend hours reading reviews and researching for other purchases like cars and cell phones and other electronic gizmos, but when it comes to the insulation in our homes, we just trust our builder to make the right call, despite the fact that they won't have to live in the house once it's done. But if you're watching this video, you're already one step ahead of the game. And if you made it this far, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing for more tips. Thanks, and we'll see y'all on the next one.